Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get our stencil ready to go. So I have already pre-made this in Photoshop. Um, it's just, it's already sized the way I needed it. It's, I've got a pretty good transfer. It's a very low res image and there's not a lot of details in it. That's okay because for the, my transfer style, I don't need a lot of details. Um, I like to sketch everything in white and you know locate my own details. So for me personally, it's okay not to have a lot of details, but if you are not confident in your drawing abilities uh, and you think that you need a little more detail out of your, uh, out of your printed image, then go ahead and uh, print a better quality photo for your printed image. But like I said again, for me, this is fine. So I'm just going to start cutting. And uh, since my rendered image has a border, I'm going to cut on the inside of this border here. So I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to go ahead and work my way around. So I'm just going to go right through the bottom of her right here, keeping it straight. There we go. And we'll go ahead and cut the gun out. Just like that. That should go ahead and pop out now. Put that aside. Save this. We probably will never need it, but I always save my scraps just in case I might need them or I might need them for in the future. Anyway, there's the positive. We're not going to cut anything else out for right now. We're going to use the positive to make the transfer. So let's go ahead and start with that. All right, what I've got here is IKS automotive graphics tape. I'm actually at the very bottom of my roll. <laughs> I forgot to buy a new roll. But what I like about this tape, and hopefully I'll have enough to go ahead and finish this, is that it's two inches wide for one, uh, and it's very thin. So unlike regular masking tape, this stuff is super thin and it's semi-transparent. Uh, that really comes in handy when what you do what we're about to do, which is, you know, cut through your tape. So um, we're using our tape as a mask. You can also use like um, transfer tape or something like that, like a lot of people do. Uh, I like this because if you do it strips at a time when you're wrapping around round surfaces, uh, it's easier to wrap one strip without getting wrinkles than it is to like do a big strip like if I were to say pull a piece from some transfer paper that's this big and try to wrap it around that tank you know that's just it's complicated so I don't know that this is the best way that I've found so far but for right now it's my favorite way so it's what I'm gonna do uh, I'm torn. I don't know which better. The gra I don't know if it's better for the transfer tape or if it's better for this tape. But like I said, this is what I'm doing. They're both about equal. Okay. Lay that down. And I'm putting as minimal of overlap space as I can because when you're cutting through it, uh, if you cut through two layers of of uh, tape, it might not go through both layers, the cut, so you want to make sure that um, that you minimize that. So there you go, and I'm, I'm being very cautious to not have uh, any wrinkles if I can help it. So there we go. And uh, yeah, you should be able to get this tape at coastairbrush.com if you want to go ahead and get some for yourself. I love it personally. Uh, after I started using this tape, as far as artwork and custom paint is concerned, FBS tape, which is, this is from the FBS family. In my opinion, FBS tape for custom work, you know, I'll never use 3M again. I use 3M still for, you know, some of my heavy duty masking, uh, like, for cars and you know like your typical traditional like collision masking I still use my 3M and I keep it around if I do need it but it's thicker and it's I don't know this is just 
this this tape was designed for custom painting like what we're doing here so so they they thought about things and, and it just works really well I'm a big fan minimize the wrinkles as much as you can you can't really help it too much around there so you want to push those down really tight and here you go instead of putting tape all over this thing I'm just gonna go ahead and add paper this is when I still do use my 3M tape uh, it still works best on the paper machine so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that up on the borders here and you want to make sure when you are uh, when you're doing some heavy-duty spraying you don't want any overspray anywhere so I'm gonna tuck this around And it's okay to leave this gap because I'll just fill in the gaps with more tape. As you can see, I got a towel down to protect my tank from any scratches while we're, you know, maneuvering it around. Anyway, there you go. So I just threw the paper on there. That's going to protect overspray off the rest of my tank. So I'll go ahead and fill that gap in and we'll be ready to go. All right, off camera, I went ahead and lined this up the way that I wanted it. And... Uh, just taped it down with just a few pieces of tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spray around the borders and that'll give me where I need to cut. So just push it down. Give yourself a pretty solid outline. Go ahead and go through your tape for now. Let's get her gun in there. all the way around the border. You want to make sure that the paper is good and pushed down so that way you don't have a foggy outline and it's hard to cut. So just, just work your way all the way around, pushing it down. You don't want to put too much paint over your deal because you don't want to cover up your transfer obviously, but you know you want enough to where you can see a pretty good line. So, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off in the areas that I need to paint and just move it over right there. Move that over like that. Just like that. Like that. Finish that out. And I'd say we got a pretty good transfer. Let's go ahead and pull it off so you can see what we did. There you go. I have a really solid line of everywhere that I need to paint. It's a little faint here. I probably could have put more paint down, but you know, it's in an area that you know, if you want, you can go ahead and do this, but you know, I don't really need to, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah, there it is. Every time you start a new project, especially when you're cutting directly on your surface, like especially like on a tank, you want a fresh new blade. Because if you have a dull blade that's not sharp and you go to cutting all the way around this, you're going to get a lot of areas that don't get cut all the way through. And then you're going to have to jam down a little bit harder to get it and go over it more than once. And that creates problems and it gets deeper cuts. This way it's just going to be clean and smooth. And I suggest when you pull, you want good light. So I'm going to move my light so I can see. I don't want my shadow to fall into where I'm cutting. That way I make sure that I cut on the line. So. I'm going to pull because in my experience is pulling or, you know, is easier than, well, obviously it's the only way to do it. So let's go ahead and just stay directly on the line. Don't put too much pressure down. That's why we're using the thin tape because the thin tape, you don't have to use as much pressure and we got a nice blade. Just let it float. Be as precise as you can. All right. Now don't do anything yet. Don't pull it off and get all excited because we now we have to cut her out and we're going to use her as a transfer again. So let's go back to the cutting board and cut her out. 
Okay, so I went ahead and uh, put a couple pieces of tape here and there. Uh, I'm putting the tape in areas that, you know, it's easy to make up the information in between if need be. So, you know, if we lose it, because we're going to be spraying through it. So let's put her back up where she was, put the hat, line it up. Move that over a little bit. Try to be as precise as you can. I mean, it's not super important to be precise, but, you know, the better job you can do, the better. So anyway, there we go. Let's tape it down. Tape it down. There you go. She's, she's in the place she needs to be. So, just like before, we're going to go ahead and spray a border. But make sure you don't put too much paint down that you cover up this, because we still need it. So let's go ahead and make this part. Just push it down all the way through. Make sure you got a good solid outline. Okay, now we got that outline. Let's go ahead and move our tape just like before. Move it somewhere else. It's starting to lose its sticky. All right, move it somewhere else. And let's fill in those gaps there. And there you go. Let's see what we've done. Pull it slow just in case you missed any areas. You want to make sure you see it. And so far it looks good. Looks like I got it all. All right, and just like before, like we did up here, go ahead and finish your cuts. And what I would do in these areas where it started up here is, is start your razor blade inside. As you see here, I'm gonna start where I started. That way I don't have a jog. Like there's a slight jog from the two stencils. So I'm just going to start up here and just continue it down. By the way, any tool that I use here, you can get at coastairbrush.com. So no matter what I use, they either have the exact same tool or they have a very comparable tool. That's everything from the tape to my razor blades to my airbrush to my paint. There we go. Now let's go ahead and pull her out. And when I do, I'm going to go start with the top piece of tape and pull back. I always, I don't just pull straight up and out because if there's a place where I didn't cut very well it'll pull the rest of the tape up so what I do is I pull it this way so if there is a place I might have skipped it'll it'll at least tear it and it won't uh, you know it won't make a mess so that's clean I'll use my razor blade to pick this up give myself a little starter see so as you know there's a little tear there so you just want to be careful and pull it off real slowly. There we go. Super clean. This is true with any masking. If you're unmasking anything, whether it be a car or, you know, whatever, something that you've got a paint edge on, you don't want to ever pull your tape and just go whoop because it'll rip it. You want to, it, you, you, you want to pull against the tape like back like this because it slices it on the edge so it won't rip it and pull it up. So even if you have any problems like right there where it might have torn before it'll you know it'll help it. You know I've I've been in the paint and body industry my whole life and I've had times when you get people that you know like say the guys that put windows into cars or something and they'll get ahead of themselves and there's a car we just freshly put some new paint on and they need to go put the window in and they don't ask us to unwrap it first and uh, they go to ripping all over the place and you got all these messed up areas especially in the collision repair because you're in a hurry when you're masking so sometimes you have little imperfections and you're masking every once in a while and it'll pull paint up and just make a big old mess so unmasking is not you know not like Christmas morning. You don't want to rip it off real fast. Anyway, 
there we go. Now we can go ahead and make sure all of your little areas right here push down because we're about to spray a lot of paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get my color ready and do the next step.